All right, recording has begun. Uh, okay, so this has been a while, but we're back in Welton. Okay, as a recap of last time, uh, the city administration is trying, trying to stiff us on pay. The um, A noble in the city is asking us to investigate an attack on his son from something that tried to take a bite out of him. Um you guys have pissed off a gang of people in top hats and blown up a building full of innocent people. Uh, you've also followed the the administrator that is trying to stiff you to a supposed whorehouse that smells like uh, sex and blood. Uh, a few of you are at an, at an academy trying to get recipe. Uh, uh, let's see, ingredients for what thermite. Thermite and dynamite. So try not to toluene. Yeah, meats and, then, and uh, calcium. And you failed your uh, your check on trying to convince the engineer check to give that to you, and she sent you to the high wizard or whatever, uh, Niljash. Uh, Fuse has rescued uh, Phil from a fire uh, that somebody set to his apartment building, and you guys are on your way somewhere. <clears throat> Did I miss anything? Um, cat lady. Professor Don von Dilfen Schmurfer is a crazy lunatic. And he has a different yeah. personality sometimes. Okay, so Francis is a crazy lunatic. Dilfen Schmurfer is just a an asshole. Yeah. And he and uh Bidey are best friends. They're very special people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna be coughing every now and then. My voice is weird, and I've got baby chicks peeping in the background. So if anybody can hear that coming through the recording, I'm very sorry. But for now, what would you guys like to do? How are we gonna unwrap this this mystery? Mm. I was like, I was, so who 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 wants to go first? Let's go with Fuse and that guy. See where we're going. I like it. Uh, so Fuse is uh, just guiding Phil down the street, and he will be watching over his shoulder. And he's going to kind of take him a roundabout way, passing through a few side streets, but ultimately making his way back toward the inn where the carriage is, so I can group me up with the people so we can talk about the bank and our money. Okay, so you're trying to take like a sort of route that uh, shakes pursuers and such? Or at least lets me know if we're being pursued. Okay. That sounds like a sort of experience and wisdom thing. Will you go ahead and make like an insight roll for me uh, to see how well you do on that one? And I'll roll against you. 16, that's pretty good. Okay, you don't see any pursuers uh, following you. Or at least you think you did a good enough job to where you're not going to see pursuers. Uh, where are you taking him? You're going over to the northwest is, or something? Um, so where the black carriage is, that's where the inn is, correct? That's correct. What we're correct. Yeah, so I'm going to be going... Um, through the south, past the Central Market, toward the Noble District, and then I'm going to circle up that direction. Okay. As you're going that way, uh, you're seeing, like, uh, patrols of guards, like, uh, running, or, or, like, at least, like, a sort of jog marching over toward the direction of the fire where uh, the apartment is, where you just were. And you see more than a couple uh, wagons full of, what looks like tankards full of water and such are going that way. And then there's... There's also um, a, a Miju carriage headed that way as well. All right. Well, when we get to the uh, bridge that crosses the chasm, I'd like to uh, cross it and then step to the side and then watch the do a perception check and see if we can see anything that might be suspicious following behind us or something along those lines. Okay. Okay. Maybe he doesn't want to be seen. Phil is still coughing quite a bit. <laughs> when you get to that side of the bridge, uh, he motions over to the side. He kind of sets down 
next to one of the support or the the railings over on the side just kind of like puts his back to it <coughs> and uh he looks like he's ready to take a breather as you watch there are people going uh going across the bridge and such um go ahead and roll a perception check All right. You don't see anybody that might be uh, looking for you. Okay. Uh, then after that, we continue on our way uh, past the Noble District and up toward the inn. Okay. So you're you're continuing like on the main street or something like that? Like that? Down south here toward Noble District and then moving up this main walkway. All right, let me... Okay, so as you're walking along the, the main street, um, you see <coughs> the crowds are pretty thin now. The sun has gone down. Other than, like, the fire on the horizon where the apartment building was, things are pretty dark, and people have a lot uh, gone inside mostly. But what about the street light? <laughs> the street lamps are on, but they're you know they're fairly far apart, like a street lamp would be, like you know, like every block or so. And sometimes when you're in the dark, you see a couple figures uh, traveling through the light behind you, going the same direction. They they look like they're armed, uh, but they they they're pretty indistinct from where you're sitting. Uh, I'm just going to nudge Phil and tell him that we need to pick up the pace a bit. Uh, Phil, uh, he's still not talking that much, but he he coughs. He's like, yeah, yeah, I can. Let's go. I don't like this. Um, how far apart are we suggesting these people might be from me? There may be a block or two back. Depends on when you look. Okay. Um, when we get up to uh, the darkness of the next passing, I do believe on that last match, I picked up some caltrips. Okay. Okay. Oh, I picked up ball bearings. I'm sorry. I want to disperse a, a few uh, handfuls of the ball bearings on the ground behind me as we go. As quietly as I can, of course. Right, right. Um... Where are you gonna do it? Like you gonna do it like uh, in the in the darkness next to a lamp, or what are you gonna do? Uh, just in the point between two of the street lamps, and then just keep walking. So uh, they'll cover a ten foot square area. Okay. So okay. the expected path of you know those people. All right, maniacal. I see you sneaking off in the distance. There. Would you like to stay sneaky or uh, what? Yeah, I'll stay sneaky. I'm uh, basically going to escort while being unseen, just uh, much for backup in case shit pops off. Okay, roll for Der Schneeken, the stealth. <coughs> All right, not bad, not bad. Okay, so Fuse, you and Phil are still going. You've got uh, he's got his arm over your shoulder. He's having a pretty hard time. Um, the two of you have picked up the pace, and you can tell that your shadowy pursuers have picked up the pace as well. Um, let me just roll for their perception. Maniacal about to have some fun. Okay. Supposed to be in a. In a disadvantage, right? Because there, it's in the darkness. Hmm. Yep, you put it in the right place. Let me roll it again for a disadvantage. <coughs> okay. They don't see your ball bearings, uh, apparently. So as you guys are doing your sort of hobble shuffle really fast, you hear someone curse uh, in the in the back, like in in the blackness of the shadows between the the street lights, and you hear like a, a sort of like. Uh, Boots shuffling on cobblestone, and then something falling. DC dexterity saving throw or fall prone. Yeah, one of them saves. 
Yeah. They both yeah. Save. They yeah, both yeah, yeah. save. Well, maybe there's a pulled groin out there. Who knows? Okay. So... Am I aware of Maniacal's presence at all? A roll of perception. Yeah, you can see somebody shadowing, shadowing you off and on the right. Maniacal's not really trying to hide himself from you, so you see him pretty well. Uh, since Sam brought this up the last uh, session about having a kind of cant for hand signals to you know relay to other people in the uh, ghouls and gauges, I'd like to just relay to two people following, you know, to maniacal. And I'll just nod to him, let him know I got it. And we're just going to continue moving toward the end. Okay. Looks like the, the two people that have been pursuing you are kind of throwing off the guise of just following you. And they're now jogging to keep up. Uh, the, the ball bearings have tipped them off that you know they're there. So they're just jogging to catch up. Uh, it looks uh, to, to be they're going to catch up with you at an intersection coming up. The next intersection coming up, you say, around here? Yeah, around there. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, then, I guess, uh, throw out another set of caltrips and then tell Phil he needs to move along to the inn and ex tell him where it is and tell wait, him to wait. go in. What? Damn it, damn it. If you remember from the very first one, we encountered a, a bar fight at a bar, like right around there, and it was a great time. You could just tell Phil to go hunker down in that bar, and you guys run into that bar right there, and like grab a brew and sit at a table and wait for them to come after you, and then start a huge bar fight, and just have a grand old time in which Maniacal just chops people in half. Mm, I like the idea, except that... Uh... You never know if those guys don't have supporters in the bar. True. I'd like, I'd like to take care of this in the darkness. I'm up for whatever. Yeah, I figured you might be. Because um, uh, if I if Fuse is going to be able to tell that they're about to catch up after I let them know that uh, he needs to move along, I'm going to turn around and pull out my uh, longbow. <clears throat> okay, so you're camped out on a street. We're we're gonna be doing the whole uh, combat thing pretty soon. Um, see that map I just put in on the right, unless it's still loading for you. Yes, I You'll, do. You will be at the north end. Your pursuers will be coming from the south. Uh, Maniacal, you're somewhere in those houses over there. He hiding in the bushes. I seen him. And on my screen, it's a little five-year-old robot man just disappeared. Uh, scroll out. <laughs> yeah, Went all the way to the right. You gotta zoom out a bit. And um, I'm gonna, since I threw caltrips down after I did that, is there any way for me to mark it on the, you want me to just mark it on the, the where I put them down at? Yes, please. Okay, give me a minute to draw it. Are you, GM, are you going to want to uh, tie in their combat with other people's combats, or are you just going to uh, play their thing out right fast? Oh, we're going to roll initiative, uh, and then we will ask you guys what you're doing and such. <coughs> we're calling a square a 10-foot section, yeah? What? Um, uh, a square is five feet. It's always five feet. Okay, well then. And that's the area the caltrops are in. The square area of ten foot, right, Jim? Oh no, I did that wrong. It is five feet. No worries, I can delete some of those. Okay, just yep. the the ones close to the bushes. There you go. Oh, you want the ones closest to the bushes? Yes, the ones closest to the bushes. No, I want them gone. Oh, okay, cool. So I want. The middle of the street. I want to force these guys to either come from one direction or split up. What, what direction? 
what Eki was saying was he read <coughs> the flavor text of your thing, and it says a square area that is 10 feet on a side. So wouldn't that square be 10 feet by 10 feet? Yeah, it would be 10 yeah, feet yeah. squared. But that's for a ball bearing. Hold on a second. I'll display for the caltrips. Ah, okay. It's five foot square, so then it's five foot in yeah, each he, direction. Yeah, he's good. That's, that's his five foot squared. He did it right. Cool, cool. Make sure I wasn't reading. I had read the, I had read the ball bearings one, and I remembered I threw caltrips down this time. All right, boys. Uh, you guys are over here. Roll for initiative, and I will do the same. We're rolling for initiative. Yes, they're coming up on you. They're they're kind of casting off the whole stealth thing through doing this. What is that? <coughs> we never did that. That's weird. We, we round down though. The reason I stalled so much during, like before this, is because I was trying to figure out how to do this without displaying their names every time I roll for them. Yeah, because we don't know who they are yet. Yeah. Well, you just listed them as guard in the turn order. Is that? God damn it! That doesn't tell us what kind of guard they are. They could pay be no attention to the man but in the corner. There. Now there's two of them. Okay. Cool. Um, you're not okay. seeing my initiative. <coughs> you gotta select your um your thing. You gotta select your your token. Your token. You're not using roll twenty, are you? Uh, yeah, I'm using roll twenty. I haven't used um. Great. So for initiative. Seven point one six. That's gonna get annoying. Okay, so you guys got your initiative. The two guys are jogging up the street. They they come and they they see you. They see you with your your bow drawn. And they know the jig is up and they're they're ready to fight. Okay, <coughs> who's whose group is going to go next? I'm sorry about the coughing. Oh, we could go next. Okay, Rui and um uh, and what? Nightshade. Nightshade. I was like shadow shade. Sh God damn it. I couldn't remember it. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I used to call you Ms. Hellbore. That's what it was. And that's what yep. confuses me. <clears throat> All right. Nightshade, Rui, what are you guys going to do? Um, so Fuse asked us to pursue. Oh, what is his name? Cantry? No, wait. Yes. Uh, what? Yeah, Cantry. Are we just calling him Cantry? Well, it's he's Supervisor Cantry. Supervisor Cantry, the guy who's stiffing us. Right. To try to get some dirt on him to leverage for our total payment that we're owed. Um, we have followed him to this whorehouse. What's it called? Uh, the sign outside on the over overhang says Faustus Folly. Right, right. Yeah. The nicest establishment in town, I suppose. I don't know. No, it's it looks like it is a bigger deal than any of the other places you've seen. Is it pretty nice? It's pretty expansive. Like, uh, let's say you guys, all the other like taverns and uh, whorehouses and uh shops and stuff you guys have seen have been fairly small sort of run out of houses or out of like little uh buildings that share business names and such this one is more akin to like uh, a club you would see nowadays like a converted sort of like warehouse sort of place but it, it looks nice from that it's like a it's like you convert a sort of half mansion into a into a place of ill repute right right okay okay and so we need to collect information. Um, when we left off, we were perched, uh, like, I guess, across the street and down a house or two as we watched Cantry go into this place. Right. Um, we would like to approach the house from the roof. Um, and see if we can't peek in a window to try to figure out number one, what's that smell? And number two, can we get any dirt on Cantry? Okay. 
so you guys want to go in through the roof. Well, right now we just want to go to the roof. Is the roof flat or is the roof arced like in the in the pictures here? It's it's canted like you would see like on a house or, you know, like it it's not a flat warehouse roof. It's more like uh like I said, it's okay. more like more like an upscale like big house. Yeah. Okay. So um start with that whole like on the roof and peer in the windows kind of sort of thing. Um, are there any balconies that we could access uh, the top floor? How many floors does this building have? Uh, the place has three floors. Uh, the first one appears to be taken up entirely by like a single sort of area, like from the windows. The The windows are mostly like either fogged out or uh, like covered with curtains. But the first floor is more of like an open air sort of like big room. There's like a you can see in these are like the only clear windows. You can see like a a bar, a bunch of places to lounge and a bunch of like pretty people sitting around waiting for for stuff. OK, um, can is there an alleyway or uh, maybe a backside of the building in which we could uh, take up a proper position to peek in the windows without being? noticed all right do a, an insight check because this is like drawing on your wisdom as like an assassin do a wisdom check with uh with advantage since this is part of your background uh, wisdom, wisdom. oh it, it's insight sorry like with uh insight with advantage <laughs> okay so the approaches you see to the building all seem to suck for you. You don't like how open it is around this house. Um, you might be able to get there, but you're going to need some kind of distraction if you want to get across completely unseen. Are there any uh, <laughs> street cart vendors or... Uh, what are the buildings on either side of the folly okay on on either side of the folly you've got let's see you've got the the river over there to the north okay uh the place has a view of the river and the miju factory across the river <clears throat> but there is a sort of boathouse over there uh with a couple boats like tied up to it like little little row type rowing type things on the other sides, it's mostly like like uh, houses, but these don't look like they're occupied. They're kind of empty. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the little rowboats, uh, they're they're tied by ropes to the uh, yeah they're they're the moored, dock yeah they're moored to like uh, posts and such. It, it's like a boathouse. Like it's a it's got like a, a little house looking area where you pull the boat in. But it's it's like got an open front. You can see rowboats tied up inside. You ever seen those those boat houses they have at like schools with like the the canoes and such? You lower them down under like a roof and then you row them out. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Okay. What about street vendors? No street vendors. Uh, the street vendors are pretty oddly lacking around here. You actually find it kind of odd. Patrols? Uh, no guard patrols, but you do see a couple people wandering over, like, maybe going to the folly, or at least trying to take a closer look at it. Okay. So you can tell... People inside are having a good time. You you hear like people uh, noises. Like you you hear. I mean, from the second story, you're hearing all sorts of noises, uh, and you'd rather right. not think about them. The first story is mostly people just lounging around and waiting, watching the front door. The windows that you can see in, you can tell that this is a nightly thing for them. They they look pretty bored. Yeah. Um. Third story. Uh, windows, balconies. Yeah, there's a couple balconies uh, out there. You might be able to get a hand up on one if you can get uh, from like an adjacent roof or something. 
Yeah, because I, I would assume that all the other buildings around are only two-story. Yes, this is the biggest one in the area. The other ones are a little bit shorter. Um, what would it take for me to light one of the rowboats on fire? Not much. They're made of wood, and they have lots of tar and stuff on them. Would that work as a sufficient distraction? I would say it would distract people. Let's do it. Okay. So you're going to sneak over to the boathouse. Uh, give me a stealth check. Yeah, you got there just fine. Um, and you're going to set one of these boats on fire. Uh, with uh, What are you going to... How are you going to do it? Um... I'm not talking about equipment or anything. Anybody with your experience can start a fire. I'm just saying, like, are you going to start it inside the boat so nobody sees it until it's too late? Are you going to, like, throw a, a lantern on it? Or are you going to, like, uh, what, what kind of what kind of flamboyancy are we looking at here? Um, start small, get big. So um, uh, I noticed a tuft of, of hay or or some flammable material inside of the the shack uh the boathouse and so I grab a little bit of it and I put it at the back of the boat and then I, I a small trail up to the middle of the boat and so I light the 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 small trail kindling in the middle and I uh, trot off into the shadows towards the house <laughs> and as it as it gets back to the to the rear of the boat it ignites the larger thing and starts to make a show of the boat and and all of a sudden it's a bright light of fire in the rowboat and we're back at the house okay so miss ms hellbore uh nightshade what you gonna be doing um for the most part i'm just on Rui's shoulder, just sort of letting her do it, all the work. Okay. All right. Uh, you guys start the fire. The place, uh, the, the boat is ablaze, and soon, let me just roll dice here. <coughs> yeah. And soon the entire boathouse is ablaze. Like, the whole place is coated in pitch to keep it safe from the water, and things are starting to go up pretty hard. Uh, you guys are in the shadows waiting and you see the people on the first floor, like, one by one, slowly start to take notice. They all get up from their couches. The bartender uh, comes out from behind the bar. They're all looking on as the thing goes. You can see a couple people going and running into the back. And, uh, like, you can hear shouting and such. But others are trying to calm the other ones down. They're, I th uh, you get the impression they're trying to keep them from interrupting whatever, whatever it is going on upstairs. And soon you you see two, like, roughly humanoid figures, like, bound out of the back of the house, kind of uh, from an angle where you guys can see. The guys are, like, they look like they're made of, of muscle, like they're, they're bricks of human beings. And they both are, like, trotting out to the boathouse and uh, attempting to see what's going on. They're, they both have, like, super square jaws and bald heads and they're they're both they look like they're they're not particularly intelligent guys but they you, they strike you as bouncers mm. and they came out of a like a back door area yeah they came out the back door and uh came around the side and are they are running toward the boathouse right now There's your carrot. <clears throat> um, Rui uh, watches the people go down and then looks at the open door and looks at, kind of looks at Nightshade. Uh, hey, with the Nightshade, Rui, Rui think that um, maybe you can uh, go in the door and... Uh, you take a look around, and maybe you see the, the things, and maybe you can get up to uh, the second or the third floor and find the uh, room to uh, open the latch on the balcony and let me in. Sure, let's go. And so uh, Rui 
then uh, sneaks over to the open back door and takes uh, Nightshade off of his shoulder and kind of like underhandedly softball pitches her to a uh, like a perch on a shelf, basically, kind of like an alley-oop. Not like a forceful alley-oop, but like a kind alley-oop up to a uh, uh, protected shelf area because, you know, like Nightshade can hide behind stuff and right. she has a shadow jump where she can like warp from one place to the next. What you're looking at is like a kind of well-lit storage room. The guys came out this way, and this this looks like a place where they store like dry goods, like cleaning supplies, and maybe maybe some like little snacky food for the bar. Um, what you see is like there's there's one way out where you guys came from. Then there's another way out uh, on the opposite end of the room, and you can hear noise from behind that particular door. Things are things are going on over there. As um. Is there any kind of slat or window in that door? Or is uh, it a solid door? No, the, the the door has like a one of those slide latches, you know, like where you, you take it and you, you look in it. It, uh-huh. look, it looks like it used to be on the exterior of the building, but they're repurposing it here. You could probably slide it back. Do, so could do you think Nightshade would be able to like jump at it, move it and go through it? Yeah, she's welcome to try. Do I need to go in there and do it for her? <laughs> I don't know. You ask her. Uh, yeah, no. Um, no I'm, okay. she's so she's off, and I am going to leap um, for up to the second story and then up to the third story in two uh, swift leaps up to a uh, third story balcony and um, maybe even up to the roof because people... Wait. All right, acrobatics time. Mm. Give, give me an acrobatics roll, and I'll tell you how you do on that one. Well, I need I need to think for a second. We're still on the same side of the building that like people are probably looking at what's going on down there. So no, I'm like, gonna. You're in the back. Like the guys came out the back and ran around the side to get to the boathouse, but everybody is looking at the boathouse on the opposite side of the house. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Cool. Then yes, acrobatics. Okay, roll acrobatics for me. All right, it's not bad. Uh, you get up the side of the house pretty well. Um, there's a little bit of noise as your claws dig into wood, but nobody seems to notice with all with being like busy inside and stuff. You make it to the third floor, no problem. All right. Well, then while Nightshade is adventuring through, trying to stay undetected, I will. Um, keep myself busy with moving from third story balcony to third story balcony, trying to listen to the window and or doors that are on the balcony, um, seeing if I can hear um, oh, what's his name's voice? Cantry. Cantry, yes, thank you. Cantry's voice. I'm, I'm searching for Cantry. Okay. All right, you guys are inserting yourselves inside. Let's get over to the um, the collegiate folks. What are you guys doing? That's us, right? Yep, you guys are at the academy. Ah, so so we have to go talk to the head ass in charge. Try to get permission to get the ingredients he needs. If you want to. Right now you're in Jezon Sin's uh, lab and she's told you that she can't give you what you want, but she is referring you over to um, to the head wizard. Well, dear lady, would you be so kind as to lead the way? Perhaps we could all go together and discuss this very profitable academic learning experience for all of us. Is this a persuasion check? I would have presumed so. All right, go ahead and persuade. All right, you don't fumble it. Uh, she looks like she's considering it. Um, Jez on sin, she's like, mm, I could take a break. Yeah, we we could take a, a walk, but I do want you guys to leave the lab first. Now lock up a few things around here and join you. Just 
understand, understand. So if you guys want to walk outside the lab, um, uh, is that what you guys are doing? Or are you trying to deceive her? Uh, we, I guess we'll go ahead and walk out. Yeah, we'll walk out. Okay, so you guys leave the lab. You can hear a little bit of clanking and shuffling of things inside. And uh, Jezon Sin comes outside wearing like a, a cloak and like a, a academic robe. It looks like it hasn't been washed in a, a long time. She closes the door, locks it, takes the keys, put them, puts them in her robe pocket, and she says, "Aha, okay, this way." And uh, she leads you guys, like, like we went over last time. Her place is like on the edge of the building, where it can't hurt many people if things explode. So she just takes you right out like a fire door, and you guys are on the walkways again. And you guys, pocket she put the keys in by chance. Uh, yes, you guys noticed that she puts it in the right pocket. Were we, were Biden and I outside or were we inside? I you, you were in the lab with them, but you were trying to make yourself scarce because you hate being inside and uh, it's a school. Right. Okay. Anyway, anyway, you guys are on the walkways. She's taking you toward this large central spire right here. Of the walkways you guys take are all leading toward that one. So uh, as you get there, the whole place is, it's bigger than it looks. Um, there's archways all the way around it and going to different sort of staircases. And as she gets over to like the doorway, she swipes her hand along the side of the the doorway and touches it for a moment and, and uh, says something to herself. And the doorway in front of you seems to, like, tingle whenever you go through it. And you guys step into, like, a spiral staircase that takes you all the way around and up the spire to the very, very top. Io Arcanum locks? How intriguing. <laughs> and she turns to you and she says, well, you would think that. But it's not so much a lock as um, you have to speak the, the phrase to actually get access to this particular staircase. You're looking at dimensional magic. You're not looking at a lock. You, If we were to go through the, the door at any other time or saying any other phrase, it would be a completely different staircase we would walk out into. Fascinating. Our spire is bigger on the inside. So you guys go all the way up to the top. I'm sorry, what? That's what she said. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Cavernous, even. Uh... So... You guys are going up the staircase. The windows that you see outside each, um, like they're on your right as you go up the spiral. And every one of them shows something slightly different. You guys are looking out at the campus on one. You walk up the stairs. And on the next one, you see like a uh, the campus in like, like a different season. And the next one up, you see like a slightly differently configured campus. It's a different one altogether. And you guys go past them all the way to the very top. And you come into like a, a large sort of arena uh, lecture room. Uh, there's there's uh, there's benches and tables and stuff set up in like a semicircle around a central stage. <clears throat> and he, you can see the guy, there, there's a guy in like a, He's a stooping old man. He's like your stereotypical wizard. He's got like gray robes. The beard is super long. He looks super disheveled. And um, he's sitting there behind his desk. And it doesn't look like he's grading papers, but he is looking through a whole shit ton of scattered like notes and such. Jezon Sin walks up to him and says, Ah, Niljash. You look busy. Sorry to bother it to bother you at this time. And the old man doesn't look up from his paper. He's like, mm, "Yes, um, this close to the alignment. I, uh, I usually have to do. I have to check so many things before we do our experiments. And you know, I have so much prepared for. What is it, Jason?" I interject. Good evening, sir. 
I do not wish to trouble you when clearly you have very important matters to attend to, but as we were talking with your fine professor here, there are a few items in this town that seem to be lacking for me to do my experiments with, and by gosh, I cannot stand it any longer. I need proper facilities and proper use of materials that this poultry town cannot offer. But perhaps someone of your distinguished characteristics could possibly enlighten us. Uh, you're going to schmooze this guy. Go ahead and roll persuasion for him. Persuasion or performance? Uh, let's see. Are you you're performing a speech? I guess a persuasive speech. Oh yeah, that is persuasion. All right. All right. Do do persuasion and performance, and I'll average them out. Persuasion was good. Performance was not. Okay, so he stops what he's doing, turns to you, and he's like, and you wish to use our facilities for your work, sir. I don't know who you are. But of course, but of course, I am completely out of line. My name is Professor Von Dilfensmers. I am, how you say, a traveling sort of the educational values. I come here and there to spread my knowledge and gain more from others. Currently, I run with these fine gentlemen and this lovely little lady over here, and of course, my esteemed colleague, Dr. Brady over here. Quite an intelligent sort he is. Don't let this facade fool you. He's got a brilliant mind. Two scholars in the room, you say? Where did you go to school, Professor? If I told you all the secrets that I know, you might find some unsavory characters in my past. But long story short, it was a city not far from the capital, quite distinguished. I taught there for a few years before things caused quite a ruckus. Mm. You don't make a very convincing argument for me to trust you. However, Dr. Barney looks like the uh, trustworthy sort. And he reaches over and scratches Bidey. the T-Rex on the chin. Barney kind of like um, sets up straight and and uh, tries to reach where a bow tie would be but can't quite get And you say you want to use our facilities to do what? Predominantly an experimentation on thermodynamics and also a way to potentially increase mining efficiency in this poultry area with a few choice chemical reactions. Thermo thermodynamics, mining. In a volcanic, volcanically active area, you've got some balls. Dilfenschmer. Well, you know, sir, obsidian is one of the hardest substances around, and getting it mined efficiently can be quite hazardous, let's say, at times, especially with the sulfuric gases and everything else going about. Indeed. Obsidian is a very important component in a lot of spells, uh, a lot of spells in arcane research. Jezon, what kind of things does he need? And she gives him a list of the things that you're you're looking at. Niljash, he strokes his beard for a moment. He's like, and will this interfere with your research on the the alignment and the surrounding lectures and such? Will this hurt you at all? Jezon thinks to herself for a moment and is like, no, as long as he doesn't take up a whole lot of space, as long as he doesn't take up a whole lot of uh, my time, I should still get the alignment uh, experiments in order and on your desk in time. Niljash, uh, for his part, sits back in his desk and he's rubbing his temples and closing his eyes like he is a man stressed and under a, a great deal of pressure. And you won't be causing any trouble on our campus? Professor Dilfenschmer. Heaven's sakes, no. Not on your campus at all, sir. He raises an eyebrow at you and opens his eyes, and 
he seems to have caught your little, your your verbal dodge on that one. But he doesn't say anything. He says, very well, as long as I'm not seeing things blow up on my campus and the city goes uh, goes about its business without any hiccups, I don't see any reason why a traveling scholar can't use Jezon's lab, as long as it's okay with Jezon. She looks rather excited about everything. Jezon looks at you, and it seems like she is a little uh, starved for fellow academics that are willing to get within 10 feet of her and her stuff. Now, of course, we are willing to compensate the facilities on the any materials that we're going to be using for our experiments. But we would want a slight cut of the proceeds should our findings be beneficial to you. He looks at you and he says, if I'm going to do this for you, I expect you to do something for me. What do you know about the alignment coming up? Well, there are several alignments that are particularly coming, but which one would you partake in? The alignment of the planets, the stars, the moon? Astronomy is not my personal pursuit, but biomechanical engineering does always speak hardly to me, and one that can partake in certain powers always intrigues me. More of an engineer than a, than a scientist, you say? Alchemic by nature. No, oh. oh, I guess you wouldn't know about this then. You know, your alchemic experiments can be uh, slightly affected by the alignment that's coming up. Our plane, along with our uh, some of our moons and the abyssal plane, are about to align in such a way in the multiverse that really gives your alchemical uh, ingredients that have to do with uh, darkness and and fire and such a real kick. You might be careful about what you get into in the meantime for the next week or so. The, the, God, what was I going to say? Uh, the, the fabric between our planes is rather thin in this particular area at this particular time. If you're going to be doing anything that involves magic, planes walking and such, you will need to do so with great caution, and you'll have to run it by Jezon. I appreciate the warning, sir. I will take it wholeheartedly. Does this last the whole week? The whole week. I don't make the rules in the multiverse, but it seems like things are just so for an entire week, but it does peak in a couple days. The The alignments are within the the zone of uh, of activity for the next week or so, but in two days... Things will be so well aligned that snapping your fingers in the wrong rhythm might just open a portal to hell if you're not careful. You know what I mean? <laughs> so this is any type of magic? <laughs> I would be careful with any uh, planeswalking magic or dimensional magic or even anything that has to do with uh, the abyss. Say some of the less savory type magics. So, I would say that yeah. your tower here is, but of course, at great risk. That, <laughs> As you can see, I have my work cut out for me trying to protect the thing from the alignment. I'm not sure if they knew what they were doing when they built this tower back uh, when, the, uh, when the, the academy was constructed. But I have to say, it causes a headache every few years because of this uh, this phenomenon. I have to ward the entire thing myself. Mostly, with a few interns. I don't trust them with the big stuff, though. I am going to uh, pull from my uh, bag a little medical brew to help with uh, headaches <laughs> and present it to the uh, head wizard. Now, is this a, a real headache brew, or are you giving him some of your, your bullshit formula? No, 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 no. I'm going to actually use a uh, one of my uh, features to do this. Okay. So you you're gonna hand him the brew. What does it do? So it's technically it's gonna be a medicine type brew. Uh, do you have this like prepared or? It's an in type of like infusion that I can do once per day. Oh, okay. Right, I can touch the flask and it automatically fills. 
All right, as long as you're not um, just pulling it out of your bunghole. No, 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 no. All right. So you hand him the brew. It's uh, he smells it, uh, looks it, looks it up and down. He, you can tell he's not an alchemist. He's more of a theory sort of guy. But he holds it up to you like a toast. He's like bottoms up, and he he just drinks it, giving no fucks. And he he shoots it like you would see somebody that is very very into his cups many nights. That's the most smartest and dumbest thing I've ever seen anyone do. <laughs> You'd be surprised what a wizard is willing to go through for a little bit of fun. Do you know what was in it? Could have been cat piss. Heaven's sake, sir. What type of scholar would I be if I'd serve people cat piss on the regular? Huh? You're weird. It's got a bit of a kick to it, but I like it, and my head is feeling better already. I could tell it had some kind of healing property to it, but I was hoping it would get me a little more fucked up than this. So he pulls a bottle out of his his uh his desk and and pours himself a glass. You have my permission to work on campus, Dilfenschmer. Doctor Bidey, I assume you'll be assisting. Of course, but of course, what is one colleague without the other? I was talking to Doctor Bitey. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk to you. Sleeping. Very well. You may all go. You have my permission to work here. But if you blow anything up on this campus during the alignment, I will be very upset. I will teleport you into our sewers. <laughs> so, don't blow shit up. And make sure we clean up after ourselves. Got it? Sorry, sure. Bitey was like chasing a butterfly or something. <laughs> you sure Bree wasn't chasing a butterfly? <laughs> I, I opened Bree the door and looked out. A butterfly. I looked out at her and I was like, is she awake? She's awake. She must be uh, doing other things too. I was just thinking about how hot it is in here and I need to like turn on the AC or something. Oh shit, is our AC not working? I don't know, but I feel very, very warm. Oh no, them hot flashes. <laughs> Okay. You barbecue some chickens. <laughs> All right, you guys are done with your area for now. All right, you guys are about to do combat. All right, let me scroll over here. All right, so Fuse, Maniacal, you guys are both here? Yes. Okay, so the two guys that are running up the path, they're, they're in heavy cloaks and leathers and such. Uh... As soon as they see you ha have turned around and you are getting out your bow and such, they have decided that the jig is up and it's time to to start firing. All right. Well, since I turned and I know they're coming and I'm looking at them, will I have the, I wouldn't say a, a attack of opportunity, but at least would I have my bow and everything ready for an attack? Yeah, you're ready. Uh, on the on the initiative list, you're, you guys all had shitty initiatives. Maniacal is going first. <clears throat> Okay. Well, my intent was to try to get, do a pincer move, kind of get behind him, but uh, that doesn't appear to be possible from this angle. Yeah, you can wait for them, but they're they're coming up the street right now. They just got within the this map area. Okay. Is there any way I could have been, say, over here somewhere beforehand? Ah, that's fine. I'll just step out and commence. All right, I am going to carry my axe over there and attack. Commence the beat down. Dang. I'm just going to walk up to the guy and hit him with a sword. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, so that's a hit. 12 Which slashing. One? So, Maniacal, you step out of the shadows behind, like, those bushes and such in between houses. You slash at the guard, and you cleave all the way through his collarbone down into his heart and lungs. And he dies. The, Jesus. The guys that 
they they are seem very surprised to see you maniacal and they're surprised to see anyone turning and trying to fight them so this guy can i just ask him what the fuck he's doing here yeah i bet you'd be pretty persuasive at the moment so uh, yeah point your sword at him when you ask <laughs> yes is there like something i need to push to See if I wet his panties for him. Uh, do it. I mean, if you're trying to get information out of him, do persuasion. It wouldn't be intimidation. intimidation. Oh, intimidation. My bad. Yeah, go ahead. I forgot intimidation was even a thing. It's been a while. Sorry, I can't even get this box to close. Let's see. Pretty good. All right. So you asked the guy, like, the fuck you doing here while you following Fuse? He turns toward you uh, and then turns toward the body of his friend that you just killed. And he's like, the fuck? And um, we're, just, we're just following the guy. We're just following him. I swear to God. I swear. Why? Fuse, what do you want to do while this is going on? Like that, you said the one thing. Now it's Fuse's turn to do what he wants to do. Um, I'm going to ready a longbow attack. And uh, if the guy attempts to run or even attempts to attack Maniacal, I will uh, attack at that point. Okay. All right, so the the guard, he's looking at looking into your eyes, maniacal, and he's looking at the the bloody sword that you're holding over his head. And uh, yes, he is. If a man had anything in his bladder, it would be running down his shorts right now. And he are just we're just supposed to follow him. We're supposed to follow him where they're going. Please, don't 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 hurt me. And as as you guys are talking and such you see two guys running uh they're out of breath and they're running in from like the the east like they're they're coming to make uh they're coming to the scene like they were they've been running for quite some time that's a backup basically you're not you don't know but it's it's a good suspicion let me roll for them Boop. I wonder if these guys are the magistrate's guards. So the guy that you're interrogating right now, Maniacal's like, please, please don't kill me. I'll just, I, I'll, I'll put my crossbow down and we can all go about our business. Can't we guys? And, but the, the guys coming into the scene are already trying to draw down on you. They they see you over there by by home dude and they look like they're ready to fight again. Do they see the dead guy on the ground who got cleaved halfway through? <laughs> they do, and they don't seem as intimidated as somebody that was right there next to him and, and feel felt the blood spray. I can't see the one of these people, can I? Not yet. You can hear them you huffing hear up here. Do they do they have a clean shot on maniacal? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it, but they can move now. So one of them moves out here. Uh, is it this guy? No, it wasn't that guy. Damn it. Okay, this guy has to go first. Hang on. So this guy moves out into the middle of the street. Uh, he sees Fuse on the right, Maniacal on the left with his sword next to home dude. <clears throat> and he turns uh, toward you, Fuse, and he uh he whips out like a, a sort of uh club like a truncheon from his belt and makes ready okay. to, to come your way now since i had readied it for the other guy i'm assuming i can't use my action on this one uh no but the other guy you're you've aimed at him like you'd have to do like a snap fire on this guy if you want since you're aiming in generally the same direction you can do an attack with like a disadvantage and see if you hit the guy Yeah, because uh, as soon as I release this arrow, I'm going to drop my weapon and pull my swords. Okay. 
So, what am I doing? A long. Uh, this would be a longbow attack. One second. Yes. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to do that one in disadvantage. One second. No, no, wrong button. Damn, that's a good first roll. Yeah, all right. Uh, you want the lower of the two, yeah? Yeah, it's disadvantage. Damn, damn. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Okay. So, uh, I'm a fighter, uh, so my stuff is pretty high. <laughs> shit. Okay. So, you can, sh I guess you want to do the higher damage one. Oh, wait, no, you got to do a lower one. So, it's 10 damage. Do lower one. That's fine. Okay. So, and then also a so, crit. yeah, it was a crit. So, you got 10 damage, right? So, it's four plus six. Yes, sir. Okay. So your snap fire, like you see the guy like tumble out from the side of the houses and draw his weapon. You make a split second decision and loose your arrow in his direction. It hits him like in the windpipe, like the arrow goes into his windpipe and he's, he's sitting there uh, or he, he drops to his knees and he looks like torn between trying to pull the arrow from his trachea and uh, turning and calling for help, which he cannot do. He can, all he can do is like a little whistle. Yeah, he's panicking and he's clawing at the area around the arrow, but he hit, does not dare pull it out either. So, just not quite enough to kill him, huh? <laughs> yep, that's right. Just not quite enough. So the other card comes out, and he uh, he sees his friend get fucking like feathered by an arrow, and he. He sprints around and he draws his partic his truncheon his his club and steps over and tries to hit you, but he steps on Caltrops first. Let's see, what do your Caltrops do again? It is fifteen dexterity no saving throw. All right, let me do a dex save for him. 21. So he's walking over your, your Caltrop field. And so oh, is the dex like for the damage? No, he doesn't take the damage if he saves it. Okay, so this guy is pretty damn nimble or pretty damn lucky. And he walks around all your Caltrops and gets up next to you and, and pulls his, his trunch and he's going to try to beat you down with it. But he is unable to the truncheon barely makes a dent in your your armor <clears throat> you can kind of swat it aside if you want to yeah i just look at him and give him a look like nope fucked up buddy <laughs> okay maniacal what you gonna do well i'm just gonna turn and attack this guy because he just makes bad choices and this is what happens you're right. Fuck that guy. All right. So in his panic, he falls backward as your as your sword comes down, and he is able to just barely get out of cleaving range. All right. Then, so if he's fallen, could I go up to the other guys or? Would he attack me as he's falling? No, um, no uh, this guy, the, the guy is prone now. You intimidated him, and he's not going to get an attack of opportunity, but he does still have his crossbow. I thought Cody got two attacks a turn. No, nah, he's a barbarian. I don't think he gets two yet. I do. I'd have to look. Extra That's... attack beginning at fifth level. Yeah, when he's raging, he gets extra damage right now, but he's not quite to extra attack yet. Okay. Not everybody could be a fancy schmancy fighter. So I'll just stare at him and uh, <coughs> let the other guys do their thing. All right, Fuse. Um, I drop my bow after that shot, and I draw my um, longsword and morning star. Okay. And uh, attempt to hit the dude in front of me. 
first with the long uh, long sword and then with the morning star all right uh i don't see a actual attack roll it's all damage rolls it's all damage roll on this thing yeah i hit the wrong one my bad there i clicked the damage roll directly ah okay you want me to re-roll damage now yeah go ahead that's the the roll that counts now all right and now for your morning star okay is so that it? uh no the long sword is but not the morning star <clears throat> so you as you swing with your morning star it's you you hit him right in like the armpit area like of his uh of his coat and you see it like go in and uh cleave into like his his lungs like his chest area but the morning star as you swing it around it hits something uh like you can you can hear like a chain rattling underneath uh his torso area as you get like not as good of a hit with your off hand. So like you, you can tell that like under the heavy cloaks and such, they are wearing like a, a sort of chain or something metal underneath. This guy, he looks like he is bleeding into his own chest cavity and he's on his last legs. Both the ones that you have hit are very much on their last legs. I'm going to save my action surge for the next go around. Okay. <coughs> All right, the guy that you're next to, Cody, uh, the guy that's prone, he takes his crossbow and fumbles with it for a moment and tries to reload it. Uh, and he's going to try to shoot you with a disadvantage this next round because you're in melee range. Let me do the thingy. What is your natural armor, anyway? 13. 13. Okay, so by fate or luck or whatever, he snaps the crossbow up and he shoots at you, and it uh, pierces like your your like the meat of your leg and the upper thigh. But it's halved, right? You're you're that kind of barbarian, or you, is that only when you're raging? It's whenever I need to look. I think it's when I'm raging. I didn't think these guys would be a problem, so I didn't use that. Yeah, you're like a pile of HP anyway. So you, you take five damage and you have a crossbow bolt sticking out of the your thigh. Alright, the uh, the dude with the uh, the trachea wound right here that's on his knees trying to pull the, the arrow out, he's now like slipped onto his side and you can, and he's kind of given up on life at the moment. He desperately wants to curl up into a ball. He, there, there's no fight left in this guy. Uh, the dude next to you, Fuse, the one that you cle you cleaved into his chest cavity, he still wants to go after you in some way. So he swings his trunch in very um, at a very awkward angle with his chest all the being the way it is. He does hit because I have 15. Okay. And you take four bludgeoning damage. Sh should that yeah, at a disadvantage. Oh, you can't disadvantage damage, can you? Uh, the guy has got a uh, a longsword chest wound that has almost killed him. I rolled it at disadvantage. Okay. All right. Maniacal. Well, I'm just going to grab this fucker and try to, like, tell him to... Tell me who the fuck sent him. Like, interrogate his ass. Is he full health still? The guy next yes. to Maniacal is full health, yeah. He is a lucky son of a bitch so far. He won't be, but it, he needs to answer some fucking questions, so. Okay. Has, has he thrown his crossbow down? Like, is he on his knees yet? He just fired off a lucky shot and hit Maniacal in the leg, and that just made him angry. So Can we chop, chop his hand off, chop his hand off. What do you want to do, Maniacal? Uh, sure, I will chop his hand off. Fucking a. 
whatever his fucking dominant hand is. All right. But you you have fire breath too, right? <laughs> You're Dude. a mean kitty. So ch- chop his hand off and then sear the wound so he doesn't bleed <laughs> to death. So so with a, a 12 on the attack roll, home dude, still trying to reload his crossbow, um, is scrambling all over the place for a bolt and stuff. And your your chop that goes for his hand instead cleaves the crossbow. And the the arms of the crossbow like uh, lose integrity and pretty much explode all over the place, showering everyone in wood and such. He looks as surprised as you are. So, do I like? Is he still intimidated, or can, will he answer my fucking question already? He's pretty damn intimidated. What what question would you like to pose to him? Who the fuck sent him? <laughs> we're guards. We're guards. Just leave me alone. Guarding what? That, Shit. That's gonna come out of my pay. It's gonna come out of your ass if you don't answer me. We're city guards. We keep the peace. By attacking people and fucking in the middle of the road. Fuse, it's your turn. I'm gonna use my uh, uh, long sword on the guy that's closest to me, the one that's got the sucking chest wound. Okay. No mercy. All right, that one hits chain. Doesn't go through. Yeah, that that one hits his chain and it uh it rebounds off. And then I'll swing again with my morning star. That one's a hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. Yeah, this one caves in his skull. Yeah. Um I'm gonna now move my use my movement action to get within proximity of uh actually, yeah, yeah no, I'm gonna pick my bow up off the ground. Okay. And that'll be my end of my turn. All right, Maniacal. The guard next to you is still trying to talk. He's like, we're guards. We're, we're trying to, uh, we're following the suspect. You, please, leave us alone. We're trying to follow a suspect. Well, fuck me. He's prone. You probably should have advantage on that. <laughs> Better kill him, or we're going to have to explain to the king why we just murdered his guards. 17. King, they're, they're only townspeople guards. <laughs> 17 is a hit. He, so he's like, please, we're just trying to follow us. And you you cleave directly into his, his stomach and crotch area. And he's screaming. He's like, oh, it hurts my my abdominal and crotch area. It hurts me. I would call for guards, but that would be so awkward. And the the guy on the ground next to your cow drops has bled out now and choking on his own blood. Cody, it's your turn again. Okay. Okay. Uh, you you touch him. Is that with your strong hand? That's with his strong yeah. hand. Okay. So you suck the fucking life out of this guy now. Uh, his his skin turns gray, and you can see it like getting tighter and tighter over his skeletal structure. And soon he looks like a corpse has been there for like weeks, and there's like almost no fluid left inside him. And you're healed up to full. Ooh, a man after my own heart, vampire touch. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Dick Stain's dead. Uh... Are we out of combat now? Yep, or... I'm going to do the song. Okay, okay. Are there anybody like out and about? Can they, Have we been seen by anybody yet? Everyone that might have heard the screaming from the houses are 
pointedly keeping their shutters and doors and such closed. In, yeah. in fact, there were lights in the windows before you guys started this, but now you notice that all the lamps have been blown out. Between Maniacal and I, we're going to uh, gather the bodies and put them in a uh, an alleyway or something, but we're going to strip their uniforms. Okay. Use his fire to burn them to death. So, like, all the guys are wearing heavy cloaks and, like, shirts and stuff over their armor, but you can see that um, as you strip them, everyone is wearing, like, standard issue, like, guard stuff. Like, the guards you've seen patrolling and such are wearing the same things as these guys, but these guys have covered it up with uh, with other clothing and such. No, that's fine. I just, I want the guards attire and their cloaks. I'm not worried about their weapons or their armor so much. I just want the stuff that makes them look like guards. Okay. Um, all four. So meanwhile, Phil is hacking and coughing still, but he's watched this whole thing happen, and he uh, he looks rather upset. Nightshade and Rui, what you do? Oh, hello. Yes, hello, please. How will you infiltrate this house of ill repute? Uh, which one of us do you want to go first? You guys figure that out. Okay, I'll go first. So I'm up in a third floor balcony, um, and I'm listening in the window. Um, I would like to make a roll to see if I can determine if there is anyone in the room of the balcony that I am on. So you want to listen? Yes. Okay, so you put your ear to the door, make a perception check. Don't you have some sort of advantage with your hearing or something like that? Is that part of being a kitty person? It is. Okay. Okay, 15 perception roll, pretty good. Okay, through the door, you hear uh, low voices. Um, you, It's kind of uh, really weird pillow talk like you you hear a lot of uh shuffling and it's like ooh, you like that and like how would you like the how would you like the steel you want to you want to have the steel right here you know and like that sort of thing it's said and, and somebody grunting like there's like painful sort of like screaming around it like a, a gag or something mm, okay next balcony Okay. Uh, I guess I'd have to roll again. Uh, do an acrobatics check to see if you can make it to this balcony. They're they're a fair piece apart, but I just want to make sure you don't fuck up somehow. All right. So, you use your claws to scramble across the uh, the wall, and you're still listening and such. You're you're about halfway there before you get to a sort of loose board on the wall, and comes off with like a sort of cracking sound and you hear whatever noise is going on behind that wall stop suddenly okay um do you think they're going to come to investigate am i supposed to give you an opinion or well no like so i guess at that point like what i'm what i'm trying to judge is do i need to go to the second floor balcony below it for the moment or it's entirely up to you. Like, what would yeah. you do if you were this were to be happening? So at, at this point, I would um, noticing that they've noticed me. I would either uh, would my character be able to scramble to the next balcony uh, or not before. Go ahead and try something, man. I'll, I'll make you roll for it, but do whatever you think is smart. No, so I make it to the balcony, and this is how it goes. I land on the balcony, and I get real close to the window, and I say, Meow! Meow! I like it. Do a performance check. All right. So um, they buy it. 
Okay, like uh, you hear through like the uh, the door from the balcony, like uh, somebody's like, "Oh, fucking cats again." And and then you hear whatever it is was going on in there resuming. You use your imagination. Yeah. All right. So the next balcony. There, there was only two on this side. This one would require like a corner of the house. You cool with that? Um, I guess I could go up to the roof and move around. Yeah, that'll work. Do you want another acrobatics? <laughs> I do. You fuck it oh, up. Shit. <laughs> this time you find a loose shingle, and both you and the shingle fall down to the balcony where you just were, and you and you both make kind of a ruckus out there, knocking over like a potted plant. At this point, I decided to just bail. Okay, where are you bailing to? Um, down to the ground, I suppose. Okay. It, in down to the ground in an effort to not like get seen or heard. Okay. Uh, going down is a little bit easier. Uh, do a stealth check to see how how well you hide. It's not bad. So you make it down to the ground. Um, you, you, you like uh, as you go, you hear like the door opening up on the third floor, and uh, you hear like a woman's voice, like oh, "fuck, fucking cats." Um, but there was there's not much to do for it. So she, you hear the door close again, and she goes away. But the shadows where you're hiding are hiding you pretty well. Okay. Um. Then I would like to. Uh, okay, so the side of the house that I'm on, can I get to a different side of the house <coughs> where I can get back up to the second floor? Yeah, there's pretty good shadow cover here since you're act up next to the house now. So you can get to the other side. All right, so I, I want to get to the other side and keep checking rooms to try to find one that doesn't have people in it. Okay. Uh, Nightshade, <laughs> what are you doing? I am giving myself a pep talk to <laughs> try to fly across this room. Okay. So what are you, uh, let's see, go ahead and give yourself a pep talk. If you do it well enough, maybe I'll give you advantage on your roll. So what should I roll? Well, uh, you're trying to go over to like the slat and the door to try to crawl through. Is that right? Um, I was thinking about, okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I was thinking about maybe there's probably like a little ledge above the door that I can try to get to. So I was going to try from my little shelf, try to like run and kind of run on the wall and like then catapult off the wall onto the little, little tiny ledge right above the door. Works for me. Roll for acrobatics. Okay. Should it just be a normal roll? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't hear you give yourself a pep talk. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's a normal acrobatics roll. Now remember, you are a very capable person and a, uh, and a little, and a pixie. So like, if you fuck up, it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah, okay, so you jump, you do your, your wall run, you vault yourself to the uh, over to the ledge, like you misjudge the distance a little bit, and you jam your fingers up against the wall, but otherwise you do okay, and you pull yourself up there. Yeah, I was just imagining in my head, like, I could do it, I could do it, let's try to fly, and yeah. If you believe hard enough, maybe you'll fly, you think happy thoughts. Right, right. Okay, now what? Now that you're you're on top of the door there. I was going to try to use my staff to try to reach down and slide the door at least a little open. Okay. No problem. That sounds completely feasible. You you slide the thing open. It's pretty quiet. Uh nobody's really paying attention. They're all paying attention to the the fire outside on the other side of the room. So the, the slat is open and you can crawl through it if you like. Yes, I would like to do that. Okay, so you you crawl through the open slat. As you go through, you see like the you're you're on the side of a big open room. There's pillars and such with like all sorts of like there's there's velvet everywhere. There's loungers. There's like a full 
bar. There's all sorts of half-dressed people just like lying around, but uh, all their attention is out the windows on the burning boathouse and these two hulking figures like waving their arms at it and trying to find buckets and stuff. Um, like to your left, there's the full bar. There's people everywhere. On your right, there is a... Uh, um, there's like a spiral staircase with like a beaded curtain and it seems to go up into the interior of the next floor. I make my way to the stairs and try to quickly run up before people notice me. Okay. Roll advantage uh, on stealth. They're all distracted. That's why you've got an advantage right now. Right, right. Okay, so you make it to the stairs. You even slip between the uh, the beaded curtain beads so they don't make any noise. And you begin the arduous journey jumping up all these stupid stairs made for fucking tall humans. And you make, make it to the humans. second floor. Yeah, exactly. So you make it up to the second floor. The hallway uh, that you come into goes both ways, uh, like around the spiral staircase. There's doors on either side of this big, long hallway, and it's like you're in, like, a T intersection where, like, there's hallways to your left and right, hallways to your um, back and front. And every door has, like, a, a different color, and it looks like they all have numbers on them as well. Are any of the doors open? Uh, there's a couple open doors uh, in front of you. Uh, one of them looks to be on, like, the corner of the house. Uh, you know, like all the way at the end of the, the hallway. One of them is uh, like right next to you. Okay, so I sort of move to the one that's open next to me and try to listen real quick before peeking in to see if there's anybody in there. Okay. Uh, the room itself is uh, not super well lit. There's like, like really low red lighting. Um... The, but you don't see a lot of stuff in there. You see like like shadows of furniture and such. It's it's a really weird sort of red light, and it's hard to make out distinct stuff. You don't hear anyone. You don't see anyone. But there is like furniture, and everything has like a sort of uh, there. There's like stains and stuff on the wall and on the floor and such. But it's really just a room. Kinky. Is there a window? Yes, there is a window. On the opposite side of the room, uh, it's closed, but it's one of those opening windows where, like, you, you take a latch, you open it, you can kick it open. Yeah, let's try to open it. Okay. You, you're going across the floor, and uh, the place, like, smells like blood. You can tell, like, you don't have a developed kitty nose like Rui does, but you're pretty sure, like, the uh, the stuff on the floor and the walls and such is blood among other things and it's it's still wet and as you go across you can climb up onto the window open the latch uh if you're trying to do this quietly you'll just have to make a, a stealth check not necessarily because it seems like they're into some pretty hardcore stuff like yeah um okay so you undo the latch, kick open the window. Um, let's see, what side of the house is this on? This is on the opposite part of the... the. You're, you're not opening the window to the side of the boathouse, I don't think. It's on the back. I was going to try to do, like, some weird cat calls to try to see if I can call Rui. Oh, do it. Do it. <laughs> you You hear... Someone oh in the, the, on the floor above, like, the fucking cat's back again. <laughs> yes. Will I never get this done? Rui, you hear a very convincing cat call. And you should know, you're a cat. Rui mutters to herself. Rui mutters to herself. Oh, I hear, I hear the call. I hear the call. I hear the call of the wild. I, um, 
approach the area from whence I hear the call. I notice the doors, the windows open on the balcony. And, um, it is I, a second story window. I jump up there. All right, cool. It's only on the second story. You're a capable kitty cat. I think you're fine. So you slip into the 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 room with uh, with nightshade, and the smell of like bodily fluids, like blood and such, is just almost overpowering to you. This place is fresh and nasty. Oh, and I almost gag upon um, like a- arriving on the balcony. Um, the heaviness of the air hits me straight in the face, and I. I almost gag. I make a, an audible. <laughs> Will we think it's very smelly in here? And she um, takes a very small dagger and cuts a small piece of fabric off of the curtain next to the window and wraps it around her face, covering her nose a little bit. All right. Come on, Rui. It's not as bad as the fiend's den. Um, side note, GM, something I thought about just now in listening, in listening to see if any of the rooms were empty, I should have been able to recognize what the fuck is his name? Uh, his voice. Cantry. Cantry. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Cantry's voice. Um, did I notice Cantry's voice in any of the rooms that I had listened to previously? You haven't heard him yet. Though, um, you did hear somebody with, like, a ball gag or something in. Right. And I, I didn't recognize the audio tones as it could be, maybe, Cantry? Uh, no, you haven't done that, no. Okay. Like, as in I haven't rolled for it, or I did not? You did not recognize it. You had a pretty good listening check, so, um, I would tell you. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so, both of you roll perception, please. It sucks. Well, it's. Uh, I'm still dealing with the the heavy smell of intense blood. It was more than I expected, so okay. I'm having a little bit of trouble. Nightshade. Okay, you're you're looking around the same as Rui. You guys are both on the alert. Um, from your lower perspective, being a pixie and everything, you can see the area under the bed, and under the bed you see a <clears throat> like half a dozen empty potion vials. And a dropped, like, knife with, like, blood on it, like, over on, on the other side of the bed, like, on the floor. Um, a couple broken potion vials over there as well. And things seem to have gotten serious in here, but whoever it was, uh, downed a shit ton of potions to keep it going. Uh, do we know if those potions were Mijuve? Oh, you haven't checked? Yeah, let's check. All right, so... um, Okay, so you're looking at the vials. They're not labeled, okay? Um, But you do see a sort of, like, pink tinge to the uh, the outsides. Like, whatever liquid was in there was thick enough to leave uh, residue on it. You think it might be useful if you were to maybe take one? All right, well, then I will scoop one up. And but can't me being a sprite like be able to tell what kind of potion at all? Do you have some sort of alchemy in your background or something? Well, usually crom sprites can like they steal from the hags all the time from their gardens and oh, things to I make see. potions, and so. Okay. Um, <clears throat> from the smell, you can tell a couple of the ingredients, but since you haven't actually smelled meju for anything or before. Uh, you're not sure if you can place it. Like, you can tell a couple of the ingredients, and it would probably be useful to, right. like, okay. Dilfenschmer or something. But, I mean, you can tell it heals, you know? Okay, okay. So, yeah, we we let Rui store some of the bottles then. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, we're gonna look through the bottles right fast to, uh, like, we survey the bottles to see if there's any residual liquid basically combine them into one, cork it, and put it in my knapsack. Excellent idea. I like it. These are all the same 
potion. You didn't just make a concoction. <laughs> no, these these appear to all be the same stuff. The red light sucks for your vision, but you can tell these are all uniform bottles. All right. Uh, the academics, what you guys doing? I'm just assuming you guys are out of the tower. You've got permission to work on the uh, on the campus. What would you guys like to do? I can teleport you somewhere. I can have you do things on the, the campus. What do you want to do? It's nighttime, correct? It is uh, definitely within the night now, yeah. Then I say we adjourn for the evening and head back out here tomorrow and have a fresh start at everything and get everything underway. A tired mind is a troubled mind. I know um, that my character is like, <laughs> she's ready to go sit like near a tree or something. Bobby? I'm ready to go when you are. Okay, so you guys going back to the inn. Uh, Bree, do you want to go and find a tree, or what do you want to do? Is there a tree near the inn? There's there's rivers and such in town, but the inn is in the middle of just stank-ass city. Stank-ass. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to call it. It's not exactly the nice part of town. Well, um, as long as I have Bidey with me, maybe I'll just go, like... <laughs> If everybody, if other folks want to go back to the inn, we haven't made a, a huge stink, right? So I'd be somewhat safe finding a with. Yeah, your your ranger training tells you you're most likely to find a tree uh, in a park or at at a river. Yeah, I'll um kind of start walking back to the inn with these guys, but. Probably look for a tree on the way back. Okay. So, okay, you guys, you can go ahead and go back to the inn. I know that uh, the guys that just fought the guards were going back to the inn eventually as well. Uh, Ren, where would you like to go? There's there's all sorts of places to go. Like, everywhere around along this river and such, there's foliage. There's a bit of peace within the city. Uh, there's also a, a park down here. There's places to go, but it's really up to you. Can you ping it out again? I was zoomed in. All right. Anywhere you want to go near the river will probably find you a little bit of uh, foliage and nature and such. Where's the... Okay, hold on. I got to reorient. Bobby's at the end. Right. Yeah, I want to go where you just... That's a good point. I didn't do that, but go ahead. Get a little triage. Oh, oh, that hurt me physically. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> as you sit there in the uh, the relaxing repose of Mother Nature, or at least as much as you can, you smell the scent of like burning tar and wood on the air. You're not sure why. The wind seems to be blowing from the east. But you're not uh, you're not sure, but that you think something might be on fire out there. Uh, you also catch a little bit of the wildlife in action. Uh, there's a bunch of rats and um, a few eyes staring at you from the from the 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 bushes and the trees and such. But you don't think any of it's dangerous or anything. Eyes like what size are the what size are the you're thinking they're squirrels, and you're you're pretty safe in that assumption. They're not like fairies or anything. No, <laughs> we go ahead and roll a uh, perception check. All right, so it's it's an okay perception roll. You almost miss it, but like thanks to like the uh, the quiet of the place where you are and such, um, you hear like the creaking of wood out on the river as you're you're sitting under the trees and such, 
And when you peer into the darkness and over the water, you see a group of like three boats um, uh, rowing their way down this, this river. Mm. Uh, is there anything I can do to look like an insight check or something? Mm, let's, what are you trying to find out? I don't know if these guys are being sneaky or if they're like, if they're just yeah, they're traveling. Yeah, go ahead and roll an insight. All right, yeah. The fact that they're not using any lanterns and no one is calling out orders or talking on the boats and such uh, tells you that these guys are being fairly sneaky. Uh, the boats are fairly large deals. Like, they're not just a rowboat. They're for carrying things on a river. They're, they're very heavily made. Can I see much of, like, what's going on on the boats? Like, they have big, big um, stacks of crates or, like... What is the I range know. of your dark vision? I, I know you're an elf. You've got some kind of dark vision, right? Um, yeah, hold on. Actually, I've got primeval awareness. I can use my action and expend one ranger spell slot to focus your awareness on the region around you. Since whether the following types of creatures are present, oh, that's, well. What types of creatures? It says aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Yeah, you can use that if you want. All right, considering I'll probably end up going to sleep for a while after this, so I might as well. Okay. So you focus your senses and you open yourself up to the world around you in an attempt to uh, glean something else about the situation. All right. Uh, you sense an aberration somewhere around you. You can't sense it in the immediate area, but you think you think to yourself like down or maybe uh, behind and down. You sense a fairly strong aberration somewhere in that direction. Uh, you also sense an undead presence somewhere among the boats. Ooh, creepy. I've got intel. Um, my dark vision says that I can see in dark and dim conditions within 60 feet as if it were bright light and in <laughs> darkness as if it were dim, dim light. Okay. I can't discern color in darkness, only she. Okay. So on the boats, the, the, the river's not that large, but it's a little bit, you know, uh, wider than 60 feet. Um, but your eyes give you a pretty good idea about there's some figures on the boat. There's a large sort of like barrel looking thing on the boat, like a, a sort of tanker. Like you, if you were to think of like a steampunk uh, gas tank on a semi, you know, uh, uh, one of those is on one of the boats, like a barge. And like there's a large, large hulking figure um, up on top of that particular tanker type thing it's unnaturally still like it's unmoving just staring straight ahead well i'm guessing that would be the undead they don't sense me do they i mean i'm pretty good at hiding right now you're sitting very still in the shade of trees it would be very difficult for them to see you unless you made some sort of noise or took some sort of action you were there first guys How long is it going to take them to pass? Uh, they're they're slowly drifting down the current. Nobody's stroking or anything, but the current goes from east to west. They're going past you, but you also know that there's the uh, the the abyss, like the, uh, the the big huge crag over this way. That's why the river flows that way. So when they get there, are they going to like fall into the abyss? And can I see them there? Like what they. How the fuck should I know? 
Bum, okay. Bum, <laughs> I am curious. You are an elf. But it looks like there's a house there. Um, can I stay far enough behind them and just kind of watch them? Yeah, you're can in I the trees. Anywhere you you're kind of in your element. If you roll stealth with advantage, I can have you follow them. Yeah, okay. You stay extremely quiet. You're in your element in the trees. Like, even as you step on dead leaves, nothing crunches. You're, you're light as a feather. Uh, and you slowly follow these guys down the river. There are three boats, the, the huge middle one and the two smaller ones with, like, crates and such on them. As they go down the river, they stop at this house you're talking about right here. Uh, they pull over to your side of the shore. Um, a bunch of people get out, like, um, you see a bunch of guys in, like, black suits jump off the, uh, the, the boats, pull them in for a moment, let the others get off, and the huge figure, like, slowly and deliberately climbs down from the, the large tanker sort of thing, and jumps into the river and just sinks out of sight, like, he's, he's gone, like, there's a splash, and then he's down on the bottom of the river, but... As you watch everybody and, and as they make their preparations, the large figure, like, walks out of the water like it wasn't no thing. He was, like, walking on the bottom and then comes up on the shore. Finally, as everyone's done, uh, the, the figures kick the boats off of the shore and let them drift on their own with the current down toward the crags. And they all retire to uh the house and then uh except for the big one the big one just kind of sits outside so wait did they take that barrel thing in or did they let it go down into the crowd no the barrel is still going down the river without anyone there Bree, what hmm. the what have you stumbled upon i don't know but now i'm really curious but i want to go tell everybody what i just saw so I'm going to go back to the end, kind of right. disengage and go back. All right, you're moving again. Make another stealth check with, uh, like, you're, you're going through the trees first? I would assume. Okay, roll stealth with advantage. Oh, that you did roll. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> like I, I, I saw two rolls, but I didn't actually realize it was the second one. Okay, so you rolled a seventeen. Yeah, I didn't make it. You're doing pretty well on your stealth. You're you're keeping to the shadows and stuff. But as you start, um, the big figure, like his head without his body, turns towards you at like an unnatural angle, and you see, like whatever it is, he's he's looking at he he noticed something where you are. Um, and then when he looks straight in your direction, you notice that his helmet that he's got on, like this a big steel sort of thing, and it looks like it's very, very close to his head. There's no eye holes. But he is staring in your direction. So creepy. I kind of shiver, and then I, I uh, escape. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't pursue... He just sits there staring at you, or staring where you, you first moved. Hurry. So I go back to the inn, and I tell, I guess Bobby's there, and Dilf, Dilf and Schmer, or Delf are there, and I tell them about the aberration, and the undead guy, and the the barrel that's going down into the crag and the house with all the crazy ass <clears throat> folks. And I'm like, what the hell is going on in this town? Okay. And Bidey's like nodding his head. The whole time. <laughs> all right. You guys at the inn, are you doing anything particularly special? What you doing? I'm um, about um, Okay, uh, you guys that just got done fighting off a bunch of city guards, what are you doing? 
Uh, have we already stripped and hauled you, off the bodies? You have stripped them, taken all the loot. You've put the bodies, what, in an alley or something like that? We're out of sight. They'll be found. That It's a town that's going to happen. Yeah, you piled them up like like meat. Now what are you going to do? Well, uh, first I walk over to uh, number Johnny Five over here and uh, ask him, so, uh, any idea who the fuck those guys were or why they were trying to uh, kill you out of hand? So, Phil, he's gotten over his cough by now. There's not as much smoke in his lungs. And he's like, I don't know. I work at the administration building. The guards are supposed to be here to protect me. And these guys said they were guards? This is worse than I thought. Let's get back to the inn, Phil. We have a lot of talking to do with the others. Maybe Bobby can come up with an idea of why the guards, question marks, or quotations, were trying to to sustain or detain you. Or maybe they were after us. Finger quotes. Maybe we yeah. could figure out if someone infiltrated the guards. Mm. Two points. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, so after that, we're going to stand on the other side of Phil and head finish our, our walk quietly and as much in the shadows as we can back to the inn. Trying not to draw any more attention to us. Okay. Uh, you do not notice any more pursuit as you guys he- uh, limp and uh, walk your way back to the inn. Phil's limping. You're not. Cody's feeling pretty good. Maniacal is all like feeling like a million bucks right now. He just sucked the life out of some dude. Okay, so you guys are back at the inn. As you guys walk in with Phil, the bartender gives you like a, a single eyebrow. Like he sees that you're carrying like a bundle of like chain and cloth and such, but you don't think he can notice like the guard tabards or anything. Well, I have some of that uh, stuff like that in my backpack. Okay, cool. Mostly it's just the armor that's available. And he's like, drinks all around then? Hopefully he doesn't see the blood. But yes, uh, uh, I throw him a I throw him a, a piece of silver. Or I guess what what would be currency enough for a round? Now, remember that the noble that hired you guys is paying your tab here. Okay, yeah, drinks all around. He he nods like he knows that you're good for it because like the the noble is uh, Lord Corvitus is going to pay him. So he gets you guys a bunch of cheap beers and sets it in front of you, Phil. Looking, he has like a thousand yards there because he just saw a bunch of people die and the guards are trying to kill him. He sits down in a table like next to you guys and he just doesn't say anything because he's a man taking in a great deal. Hughes is going to uh, take his beer uh, over to uh, Phil and drop it in front of him so he has two beers since Hughes does not drink. And uh, then he's going to go back to have a word with Bobby. All right, so we found nothing on why the Lord's son got attacked. That was not anything Fuse was looking into. You're not asking me, are you? I was asking everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From what Wynn has told us, there's quite a bit going on in this town. Uh, relates to what stuff. has happened since he left the uh, banker taxman uh, all tentacled in the that has all the stuff he's done with Phil and Maniacal and lets everybody know what's going on that way. Bree, we're not hearing you talk, by the way. Nobody's talking over you. We just can't hear you. Because I'm a doof and didn't push the button. I don't know. He's the doof. Doof and Schmurf. What were you going to say, Bree? I was going to... I for- I was just saying, like, we could go check out that house tomorrow. We're only getting half of what you're saying, Bree. Sorry. Like, either you're letting go too early or not pressing it early enough. Okay, is this better? That was a whole sentence. 
Okay, so I will push it and then pause and then wait a second and push it and let it go. Sounds technical. So what I was gonna say is that we can go check out that house tomorrow. Assume I've told everybody what I saw. Yeah, I'll be interested in that. This written, might I borrow Dr. Bitey tomorrow? Me and him have a quite a busy day scheduled. If we are to secure the necessary components for everything that y'all wish to do. Make sure you hide it. You kind of don't want to know that we're sneaking it out. That's up to Bitey. Prison pocket for the Tyrannosaur. You are Bitey. So, did you guys want to do anything at the inn? Is there anything you want to do before I go back to Rui and Nightshade? They're they're busy infiltrating something right now. No, uh, is just going to discuss uh, ways we could either use Phil to uh, possibly infiltrate the thing, or just pick his brain for information we can use to find a way to get our money. Bobby, did you want to use that silver tongue for anything? I mean, other than the obvious. <laughs> yeah, I want to try to talk to Phil. Okay. So, Phil, you look... Ren rather... needs to meditate. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Bobby. So, Phil, you look rather stressed out. It's been... Uh, it's been a day for me. I lost my job. I lost my home. And then I... I think the police are after me. Some people will call that an adventure. I call it bullshit. I <laughs> there's nowhere for me to go. I got I've got nowhere to go. Like my house is gone, my things are gone. I don't have any income, and for what? Do you have any wife and kids? No, I have a girl. I oh shit. What? I, uh, I, you know, they know me over there at admin and my, the, the woman that I love so much, they know who she is. Do you think she might be in danger? Probably. Well, don't pull any well, punches. Don't... You couldn't have not let make not... me feel a little better. I what exactly you. do you do for them, Phil? What? What is your job there at the bank? I'm a clerk. I I uh, exchange money for things. I, I take fees. I, I do paperwork. That's all. Bobby, could you use a clerk at your new guild hall? Yes. What's with the medicine roll, Professor? Oh, just brewing something up. Okay. I'm uh, not about? sure if I want to know. Blue myth. So, so, we have an opportunity for you. Yeah? It's a quiet place, away from everything, for you and this loved one, if she decides to go with you. We can use it a clerk. Start a new guild hold, and I could use the help. You need an educated man? We all do, but I can't. <laughs> I can't leave town without my without my lady. I just... We'll help get her. What if they've already got her? What am I going to do about that? If the guards have her, well, are they even guards if they're doing something illegal? I don't know how this works. Probably not. <laughs> guards can get paid off. Everyone needs something. Right now, I need you to drink the beer. Probably everyone. Calm down and tell us where this lady of yours is. He looks down like at the table, like seeing the beer for seemingly the first time. And he just picks it up and goes to town on that shit. 
All right, Professor, sleight of hand. Uh, I'm going to say you passed whatever it is you're doing. It seems like you wanted to make it a secret. I um, I, I spiked uh, Phil's drink. Okay, what should... Should he be tripping balls or going to sleep right now? Going to sleep. Okay. So he he goes to town on that beer. He gets about halfway through it before he just kind of like plants his face on the table and says, I think, I think I'm done. And he just drools on the table and, and snores. So quick question. Which beer did he spike? The one I gave him or the one he had already? The one he was drinking, I guess. The one that he was drinking from. So I'm going to assume, like, before he finishes that half of the beer, he tells you that his lady is Katrina DeVere. She is actually a noble girl. And, uh, like, their par- her parents don't really appreciate her associating with a common guy. But they're madly in love, and uh, they're doing their best to go about it the right way he's been trying to make money for a while and uh like become good enough to marry a noble girl oh this would be the perfect um the perfect mission for Rui (laughs) if she wasn't just busy with blood (laughs) professor I'm only gonna say this once don't you ever spike my drink Come now. A nervous man like that is going to bound to do something stupid and foolhardy. We can't have him running off in the middle of the night trying to find his what's it to who's it. We don't have time for her frilliness. We will save her in time and time we will. But we do not have time for him to go off and get ourselves exposed to something we don't need right now. I'm not complaining why you did it. I just tell you don't do it to me. Oh, gosh, I would never. And while you're uh, here, uh, has anyone seen the crazy cat lady and the nymph, nymph, nympho, uh, mm. the fairy with the nice tits? Oh my god! <laughs> you're a uh, dragonborn. Uh, I don't think you have a dick. Well, I'll show you one. Got a tail. That's that's true. Enough. I don't want to go <laughs> into that. So uh, answer me, damn it. No. <laughs> okay. So Rui. we just got two members of the team missing. No one yep. knows where. We'll finish up with them and they'll come back and see you guys. Ruby and Nightshade, you guys are in a bloody room. You've gathered up a bunch of uh, like film and uh, like remnants of like potions and such. Now, what do you want to do? Um. Let's see how kinky these people are. Fuck yeah. This isn't going to get awkward at all. Oh, it's... So remember, you guys are in the room closest to the T intersection that goes next to the spiral staircase. The The spiral staircase goes down to the first level, up to the third level, there's rooms all over the place. There was uh, last time you were there. There was one open room next to the edge of the uh, the house. Everything else was closed, and there is uh, there's activity going in all these places. All right. Um. Um. Are there any smells that Rui recognizes, like the guy or anything else? Yeah. Could I? Could I use my extra sensitive hearing or my extra sensitive smell to help me locate Can- Canterbury? Cantry. <laughs> Cantry. It's okay, man. It's a very generic name. Okay. I'm going to say that in this room, in this room, you are extremely distracted by how strong the blood smell is. I thought, you... I, was got... I, thought I would have gotten used to that by now. Well, if you want to concentrate and concentrate on your hearing, I would suggest going to a different place and opening yourself up to your surroundings. Like if you're going to sit there and relax and meditate and try to hear a particular thing, the place with the like stupidly cloying blood smell is probably not the best place for a cat to do Mm -hmm. so. I'd like, then I'd like to move down the hallway to that other open door at the end of the hall. Okay. And, um, in, in, or the stairs. 
Oh, is the stairs quiet? Well, the stairs he definitely would have walked through. So that's my thought on that Ooh, one. True. Yeah. So let's go to this. Let's let's go to the doorway to see if there's anybody around, and then move towards the stairs, checking for people that might run into it. Okay. First of all, are there any somewhat clean clothes? So in walking around this building, I probably took note of like a, some sort of garb or <laughs> the the staff is uniformly dressed in very little garb if, as you might guess the the patrons you haven't seen a whole lot of them because i imagine they value their privacy and you didn't see anybody go in except for cantry just now so yeah let's move to the stairs and do a scratch and sniff test Scratch and sniff. I like it because you're a cat. Okay. Audit auditory and um, you know, a senses test. All right. You go to the stairs. This this is the you're on the second floor of a three story place. You're in the middle of a T intersection. You're in the middle of the whole thing. You open your senses up to the whole place. I want you to roll a perception check, and you've got a bonus. So I guess it's advantage. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. Sorry, my my window is freaking out. Yeah, roll twenty sometimes freaks out, and you gotta refresh it. But you know, yeah, give me a sec. It's fine. Why everything gets so quiet? Uh, he's he's trying to get his dice to work. He's ah. trying to meditate. <laughs> Eighteen perception. No, I don't. That helps for me. So you you turn your ears, you open your your uh, airway, you you breathe, and you can hear everything that's going on in this in this place. There's screaming and there's uh, uh, other sounds, and. There's a lot of thumping and uh, a lot of muffled things, but you can hear Cantry's voice up and to your right, and you think you can kind of estimate which which um, room he is in. All right, from the, that point, um, I've got Nightshade back on my shoulder, and we're moving up the stairs. Um, towards the sound towards where i thought the sound would be coming from okay so you go up the stairs you find like an almost identical crossways hallway you uh follow the sound the smell you follow your your instincts uh down to a door second from the last and you can hear Cantry's voice from behind the door pretty clearly he's not he's not the the quietest of people and he seems to be arguing with someone inside um, it's uh, it's him and a woman. He's arguing with her. He's like, "Come on, I'm good for it. I I'm about to come into a good sum of gold. I have I have somebody on the hook at my job right now. And if I mean, come on, you and I we have a history. I we can do this, and then I will get you your payments really soon. I've in fact I've sent people out there to ensure that." Tonight. Okay, I'll have it. You you don't hear a whole lot. The woman is a lot quieter and she's got like a whispery sort of voice. Uh, somebody that seems like a like a subtle sort of like seduction uh, seductress sort of person. And uh, all you can hear is like a sound in, in the negative. And he's like I brought toys and you can hear like him a cork being unpopped from a bottle and uh, the sound of like drinking or, or maybe like really loud swallowing. 
and she and you can hear her be all like okay and um like can you can hear Cantry's voice rise up in pitch like a sort to a sort of like manic level and you hear him really go to town with the curse library and the uh and you you can hear things being pulled off the wall you can you can hear things like creaking and you hear uh everything things are getting violent in there uh, sorry i'm trying to piece all this together in my mind right fast I brought toys, uncorks a bottle, downs whatever's in it. His voice goes all over the place. He starts cussing up a storm. Yeah, the um, he sounds manic, and eventually, like what he's saying is not even words anymore. It's more like a, a sort of like uh, like he's foaming at the mouth, like just saying bullshit, saying gibberish, and she's not much better. Like, uh, they're, they're both having a wild time in there. And as you guys are listening to this, the door behind you guys bursts open and this, this naked dude stumbles out. He's wearing like a wolf mask and he's got blood all over him and like a sort of razor blade in, in his palm. Uh, and he's carrying a bottle in the other, like an alcohol bottle this time. Is he coming towards us? What the shit did you guys find? Right, like, right from behind you guys. Like, there's a door right across from here, like, across the hallway. He bursts out of this one, almost runs into you guys. And you can see him. He's flip-flapping in the breeze. All he's wearing is, like, a wolf mask, and he, like, looks you guys up and down. Go ahead. Um, I step to the side and uh, motion at the door and say... You first. And and he looks at you guys like, uh, uh, he looks almost incapable of speech, but he slurs something like, hmm, huh, yeah, okay. And he, he like, uh, tries the knob on the door. It's locked. But then, like, the guy is, like, thin and wiry, but for some reason, he just hauls back and fucking kicks the door in and, and charges in with his bottle and his razor. And, uh, the sounds don't actually change in there. It just seems like they keep on going. Yeah. So I'm gonna peer my. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Nightshade off my shoulder in my hand and like ease her up so that she can look around the door frame without being noticed and Thank see whatever goodness. she can see. Really, really tank, really tank that you should take Rook. Take Rook. Look for us. Thanks, thanks look Rory. For I needed to see this. Thank you. <laughs> so Is your shave? Can I Rook around? Can I Rook? <laughs> Make a perception check, Nightshade. Yay, okay. Rui want to shave. Rui want to shave. Well, then maybe you should have looked, damn it. Okay, okay. I look to. I Rook. I Rook too. So, like. All right, the. Um. The red light is almost too much for you. You're out in like the normal light of the hallway, so looking into like the uh, the dim red light that these rooms seem to have in there is very difficult. But you see three figures in various states of undress. They're all together doing stuff. But like then, the whoever it is that had the bottle breaks the bottle over the side of the bed and stabs one of them like in the stomach. Like, but everybody looks down and sees the bottle in the person's stomach, and then they all just start laughing, and they they pop, like, a, a cork off of a, a potion bottle, and the person that's been stabbed pulls the bottle out and downs the potion. Jesus Christo. Um, all right, so, uh, like, as the person is pulling the bottle out of the stomach, Rui finally pokes her head around and watches the whole thing transpire um what you see is pretty fucked up it is a violent orgy of uh sex and cutting and weird shit and you'd rather not have seen it wow potion I'm... bottles are everywhere and they're all making liberal use of the the same sort of potion bottle you guys collected from the other room yeah um, none Did of he... what we're seeing actually bothers Rui. 
to her, it's all just a means to an end. And you remember Rui has little emotion when it comes to things like this. She's very uh, ambivalently uh, childlike in a in a non-feeling sort of way. Did Cantry have a bag or anything with him? Uh, he had like his clothes, and I think he was carrying a bag, like a like a sort of man purse. Yeah. Would he notice if we just straight up took it? You get they the feeling that he's not noticing and not much. Yeah, yeah, if you're making stealth checks, I'm going to say they're distracted. Yeah, so we're going to nab <laughs> that sack. Going to nab his sack. And then just get out of here. Okay, so which one of you is going to do it? Well, they're obviously already doing it, John. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, thank you for that. You're welcome. Anyway, which one of you guys is gonna which one of you is going to go nick the purse? Don't everybody volunteer at once. I we're wouldn't gonna, go in there either. We're both gonna roll stealth. Okay. Both of you guys roll stealth with advantage. They're pretty busy. Oh, uh, that's okay. I got it. Oh yeah, it seems like you do have it. But since she's going in there, too, she has to do it. All right. You guys are both just fine. So the both of you uh, crawl in there doing your whole stealthy technique thing. When you look around, you see Cantry's stuff in a corner somewhere just kind of tossed to the side. And his, his man purse or bag or whatever is sitting there on top. Um, so uh, uh, something that I mentioned earlier was... Um... Noticing if the workers and or peoples uh, of the establishment had some sort of like generic cloak that they would throw over themselves or uh, something. You said that they're they don't wear a whole hell of a lot, but I mean, do they wear a like a gilded cloak or something? No, the the merchandise don't... is on full display. Like they all <sighs> okay. have their own unique sort of state of undress they've got going on. All right, well. Mm-hmm. Could just go out the window you came in. Yeah, that was what I was about to mention. But no, I was going to say that we go out the window to this room. Do you think that the Do you think that those people would notice if we opened this window, or should we just walk out of the window, go out the window we came in? Hey, man, don't look at me. You're welcome to try whatever you want. Mm, yeah, we're just going to grab the stuff and, and leave out the window we came in. Okay. Um. Uh... Just roll a generic stealth check for the entire journey, okay? It's Okay, you guys are fine. So you guys make it out of the house, no problem. Down the side, through the shadows, the boathouse is almost finished burning. The two bulky guys are covered in soot, but they're still, you know, out there. You guys make it out of there, and you're ready to go wherever you want. All right, we're going to go back to the... uh... Back to the, the... <laughs> to the inn. Thank you. Okay. And now you guys are all together. We we are no longer splitting the party. There's there's things that can happen all together Yay. if you want to. So we walk in um to the bar area where everyone else seems to be drinking and conversing. And Rui stops with nightshade on the shoulder. You have party without inviting us? Oh, you go oh, so, really so mad. You have party without us. Party just started. Oh, bartender. Spike milk. Spike milk now. <laughs> so he brings you a milk with like a shot of something next to it. And he drops the shot in. And that's it seems like that's as much effort as you're going to get out of the bartender for spiked milk. Oh, I'm down in that shit. Okay. And then I uh, proceed to uh, tell the rest of these fools that we found Cantry in a crazy place that they've been using this vial, which Rui takes out of her knapsack, looks at, uh, shows Bobby, and then tosses towards Von Dershfrischerfrisch. And um, uh, and it reveals that there are people doing beyond dastardly things to each other and then just drinking 
whatever that is to heal themselves back to full laughing and um doing it more so what was in the bag we haven't figured that out yet it's a book Can you hand it over? what's in the book uh it looks like uh data entries lots of numbers uh, a few letters it might be in some sort of code it's hard to discern it Ooh, uh, a leisure really really think that that uh, maybe Bobby know what in the book? I'm going to hand this off to Fuse. Fuse you're the smartest. You're Phil. merchant. <coughs> you're, Give it to Phil. <coughs> you are the son of merchants. Is that correct, Sanju? Phil is yes. on the wake. All right. As a oh. son of a merchant, you know that uh, there is like, you know, like uh, clerks and bookkeepers that come from the guild all have a, a sort of cipher they keep their books in to protect the privacy of their clients, and it looks like one of those. Oh, yes. Give me a day to decipher this. I'll probably need his help, because since he's may have seen some things. Oh, oh, by the way, Nightshade walks over to the beer that was Fuse's sees that no one's drinking it and decides to hop in and relax like a bath, turns to Bobby and says, oh, by the way, they we overheard some men discussing that Cantry discussing to a woman about some, uh, oh, fudge, man being a, got his unbated breath uh yeah sorry i'm back now i had to be um you want some help with that like he he sent some men out to do something tonight to guarantee his pay to guarantee his pay yeah there we go thank you i was fudging on that sorry hey, no problem yeah. i wrote all this down so i've got the words right here thanks so did yeah so did we did we divulge that information to the group i'm gonna assume you did oh yeah so we have several things on the agenda for tomorrow. I need a rescue party. I need an investigation party. I'm going to sit here and decipher whatever's going on with this ledger. Who wants to do what? I want um, Von Dimple Nuts over there to figure out what the hell's in that file. And then... It'll take me some time. I will need I, to be at the lab. I'm intrigued. I either need to help the little green-haired ancient child or the hot little beer-swimming nymph. It, it, it's my kind of girl. So we got a house full of crazies and another house full of crazies. <laughs> I'm going to kill shit. You tell me which house to go to. I want you in the rescue party. Rui looks at the wall and looks at her shadow and goes, Oh, Rui, you tank toe? The shadow starts moving, making gestures. Ruiz, the boat, the, we got to go to the country and the killing and the, the healing and, it, 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 and it makes some more gestures. Points at Bobby, points at Phil. Oh, oh, oh you, you want to do that? Oh, oh, Bobby, Bobby, really want to do the rescue mission. Good. You and my Nico can go do it. Vaughn's going to be busy doing our thing. So that leaves Fuse and Ren to go check out the... Oh, and Miss Hellborn to go check out the zombies. As long as someone takes care of Phil, I will go along with Ren. I will watch him as I decipher this ledger. So let's see, we got the rescue party, and uh, others are going to re uh, investigate the zombie. What about the aberration? Were you guys going to do anything with that? I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm just going to kill shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
I'm going to be going back to the academy to research the vial and potentially get the uh, needed ingredient. Okay. I'm just writing all this down so that we can, uh, I have it straight so I can write the right stuff. All right. That, it's a pretty good yeah, stopping right. point for the night. What do you guys think? It's a long rest. Yeah, it's a, it's a long rest. Is We just know that something is very wrong in Welton, or maybe s- several somethings. Where we want to know. I think the aberration is something we're all going to have to do it together. Seems kind of. Where we want to know if uh, you, uh, Bobby, intend for the Phil to stay here at the inn while everybody go to the tang, or if Phil supposed to go to help rescue the girl. Phil will stay here with me. Oh. He is no help right now. This condition. Okay. But I leave it to you, Ruri, to get his darling sweetheart here safely and unharmed. Ruri looks at her shadow on the wall. And the shadow nods the head without Ruri nodding her head. And Rui looks back at Bobby. Rui think we could do that okay. Is that it for tonight? Yeah, I'm I'm stopping recording. Good job tonight, guys. I mean